welcome to another episode of the 72 Pick Connected. With us this week, we have Tom. The only show where it's acceptable to, acceptable to be bare-chested, blasted on great alcohol. <laughs> Josh. Hey, this is me. I don't have great alcohol. Are you going to be a, bare-chested? I mean, no. I mean, I have a jacket on, so it's like the opposite. Technically, we're always bare-chested underneath our shirts. And Adam. So. <laughs> Technically, we're always bare-chested underneath our shirts. <laughs> I would like to disagree with Hello. that. I am never bare-chested. I have You're a just always sweater. Bare. Maybe yeah, your exactly. chair looks your chair your looks like a bear. Wait, what am I talking about? I'm getting lost already. We just started. This is not so, looking good, guys. So, which of us have been drinking <laughs> grain alcohol again? Uh, so, guys, um, <laughs> have you seen uh, the benching with Babish? It's always sunny in Philadelphia episode. Yes, that's yes. one of the best episodes. It, it really was my is. introduction so I, to him, actually. Oh my god, that's the best <laughs> way to be introduced to to Babish. So, um, I did make some right juice. I followed his <laughs> recipe that he actually has in a YouTube comment because he didn't put it anywhere else, um, mm-hmm. which was three parts grain alcohol, two parts pineapple juice, and one part blue curacao. Uh, and I gotta say, it's, uh, it's a wee bit strong. So I upped the curacao, I upped the pineapple juice, and it's still hard to drink. Um, so damn, did the- he s- what proof did he use? Proofing is uh, all about that. Yeah, you see, so there's like a lower tier Everclear that comes in at, you know, like 80% or whatever. This is the 95% stuff, so I might have gone a little bit overboard, but... 95%? So 190 190 proof? Yes. Oh, fuck. Yeah, dude, you went with the... um, Okay, Colin will be bare-chested here at the end of this episode. (laughs) I'm really excited, yeah. (laughs) Now, I'm not going to waste my fun, my fine... I'm not going to waste my fine grain alcohol on your bug bites, you idiots. So <laughs> how many shots are in that? I, I have to ask. Um, he just poured until it was empty, dude. Or ounces. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you mean, mean shots? Yeah. <laughs> I just dumped the bottle. Yeah. If, if you, you watch the episode, he fills like half of a glass with grain alcohol and just dumps it in. Like it's fucking yeah. nothing. Uh, I did not do that. Instead, I actually used uh, three ounces of Everclear. Okay, so that's about four okay. shots of standard liquor in there. Yeah. That is a strong-ass fucking drink, sir. Yes, <laughs> yes it, it is. is. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, my God. So uh, I'm not going to make it till the end of the cast. Good luck. Godspeed. Hey, so I'm right Tom's behind you. I got an Irish coffee going on here. So nice. We'll see how, we'll see how that goes. I bet it's, just, love me. it's just like whiskey and I guess brown sugar and cream and okay. coffee. It wasn't too good. Without, without brown coffee. sugar. That's an interesting yeah, brown choice. sugar, cream, and whiskey. Yeah. yeah. No coffee. Coffee's not a part of it. Just, no, just it's, like, it's just like, a, yeah, it's like half whiskey. I'm really bad at making drinks, by the way. So don't take any advice from me. <laughs> so odds are it tastes terrible. You just drink it and you end up really good at the end. No, of it night. tastes fine. Okay. So, like, I, okay, I, I do okay. Like, it looks all right. But the thing is, is like, if you've had any drink from my wife, my wife making, making drinks really dangerous because they always taste amazing. They don't mm-hmm. taste like alcohol at all, but it's usually like half a, half a thing of vodka in it. And you're just like, <laughs> what the shit is this? <laughs> or like, it's just like just a God awful amount of alcohol and people are just blasted by the end of the night. One night she was during a party. She was wandering around the party with uh, two pitchers of this concoction. She made these panty droppers as we call them. Uh, Death punch. <laughs> And she was wand- like yeah, she was wandering around, filling up people's glasses in a dinosaur costume. Awesome! <laughs> oh, that's this awesome. is why dinosaurs went extinct. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the day that uh, that right after I proposed to her, she was wandering around. <laughs> she was wandering nice. around with two pictures of alcohol. Good. Like it's that's a funny. party. <laughs> Josh just turns, so, looks at the camera. I've made a huge mistake. Yes. No. No, 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 no. I, I watched I, the episode of Rest of Development today. <laughs> oh, nice. Which one? Uh, I don't know. Season one, episode four, whatever that is. It's the one where uh, uh, Job decides to go to prison to break out 24 hours later. <laughs> oh. Ta da! <laughs> and his means of breaking out is to get shivved. Yeah. Yep. Love it. That show That's is a good that show. very, very underrated. It is it's, so it's fucking really good. good. 
<laughs> and the it, last it's the only season. show I've watched that just gets better the more you watch it. Yeah. I caught some things the second time watching it. That The last season uh, was weak. It was still okay. I mean, by yeah, week, I don't I mean never even bad. watched all of it. Uh, you could tell they had issues where um, they couldn't get people together. And that really sucks because yeah. that cast, while it was odd and just kind of anxiety ridden, just watching them interact with each other, their interactions <laughs> with each other were great. Oh, yeah. They were so good. Okay, Lucille Bluth has got to be one of my favorite characters in any TV show of all time. She's just such a prick all the time. <laughs> yes. Um, isn't that the same lady that does Mallory Archer? Indeed, they are the yeah. same person. Same like character. there is no Lucille Bluth. There mm-hmm. is no yeah. There is no Mallory Archer. There's just this one person who happens to be both. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've been watching a lot of Archer. We're um, all the way to the, I don't, I think it was the last season, Dreamland. And I will say, I'm glad I got back into it. I remember being in college when it first came out, sitting around drinking and all that, just watching it, having a blast. And then I just stopped watching it completely. Like halfway through the second season, I just stopped. And I'm just now getting back to it. Archer has become my Netflix background noise. Like, if I don't know what Hmm. to watch and I don't really feel like anything heavy or something I don't have to pay attention to, if I'm working on something, I'll throw on Archer because I can't show a look over, chuckle a little bit, and then go back to whatever I was doing. (laughs) You won't in the end of next week. It won't be on Netflix anymore. Yeah, I know. Oh, they're taking it off? That sucks. Will it be on Hulu? Oh, yeah, so it's definitely going to Hulu. Yeah, I mean, this is honestly where Disney and Fox are going to really, really hurt Netflix. It's going to happen. Netflix is eventually going to belly up because they're in debt up to their fucking eyeballs, but people keep investing Uh, in them. I don't don't think so. I don't think they'll belly up. Their original content's enough to keep me there. (sighs) Yeah, but their original content's enough to make them not money. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's true. It is really expensive to do what they do. But hey, I I can't get rid of Netflix because how would I watch Stranger Things for the 27th time? (laughs) <laughs> dude that is have you so actually good. watched it more than once i've watched it twice nice yeah it's really really good you actually finally started watching it eric yeah i've, I've seen it through now okay i, I really awesome. enjoy it i like the uh D parallels they do in the show i thought that was really mm-hmm. well done yeah that was cool yeah and, and the they, demo corgan they pull off that uh, that 80s aesthetic like the nerd video game arcade aesthetic whenever they did a couple episodes mm-hmm. around that was done yeah. really, really well. And the soundtrack yeah, is incredible. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. Sometimes when I'm programming, I will just throw on the Stranger Things soundtrack. It's so yeah. good. That 80s synth sound. Have uh-huh. you... Um, oh, love it. Did you, did you ever see... I don't know if you saw I posted a music a couple of times because I got super addicted to it. It's called um, Retro Wave Outrun. It's a playlist that I made. Or did I, yeah, didn't you make I that sound? Yeah, I put that playlist on <laughs> nice. a couple times. I it's love so that good. style of music. It's so good. But, I've yeah. been listening to uh, Wave Shaper and uh, Laser yeah. Hawk recently. Yeah, those are both oh, yeah. excellent. I think it's <laughs> Wave Shaper that actually uses all like real hardware synthesizers to do all of his music instead of using software. Holy I could shit. be wrong. It might, I might be thinking of somebody else, but I heard I've heard that before. But at least one of those God damn. does that. Does anyone ever be cool. use like a theremin or a, what is it called? Um, theremin. Theremin. Yeah. And does anyone actually use one of the thermos? Does anyone, thermos thermos? So. Does anyone use what a thermos? It? Fill it with coffee and bang it. <laughs> <laughs> bang it? <laughs> Wait, what? what? Stick. Come on. It's a fucking <laughs> thermos. Stick. What the hell? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey. Wait, you think I'm saying someone go fuck a thermos? That ain't going to work. That's what I heard. That's what it's I not, heard. You're what do you mean it's not going to work? Comfortable. I yeah, know, it would Josh, work. Just fun. don't don't challenge our viewers. Don't challenge our viewers in such a way. They will They will rise up. Please I can I can see I can see Farkas who just started watching grabbing a thermos full of coffee and just going to town. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, we have oh. digress. Well, that's that's yes. the show. What are we talking about? Anyway, we're talking about Breath of the Wild. I started playing it again. <laughs> that's what we're oh, talking okay. about. I'm moving on. I'm moving on, you guys. Uh, so I started playing you, it. What do you think so, of it still? I like it now. I didn't like it to begin with. And I think it was because of the lack of direction that I had initially. Like I, I was going into it thinking like before, like when you do that first segment, the first like 10, 15 minutes or whatever, the guy says like, Hey, go check out that thing over there and then come back and tell me about it. I'm like, all right. And so like, you know, like a true adventure, I didn't do any of that. And I just left. 
right? And I just started exploring on my own. And I didn't do that thing. And I'm like, if that's all I got to do, like, there's not really a lot to do. It's really empty. There's not really a lot going on. I'm like, eh. And I'm like, so I put it down and I came back and I was like, oh, I should probably just do that thing that he asked me to do. Hold on. So I went and I... You never left the plateau and you were having the oh. feel of your game. Huh? You never left the plateau when you had your yeah. original opinion. Yeah, because I was okay. spending a ton of time wandering around that plateau. I went off into all sorts of different directions. I, like I left, I like I went down the plateau and wandered another way. Like I was doing a whole bunch of weird shit, just because so, I was just like like trying to break it. Kind of like, kind of like my run with um with Skyrim, right? I equated it to Skyrim. Everyone equated it to Skyrim. So like when I played Skyrim, I never met the Greybeards, and I did hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of that game, and it was amazing. So but for I didn't, those of you who don't know, Breath, I want to say this real quick. The Plateau mm -hmm. is essentially Tutorial Island. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the it's, only thing the game requires you to do. Right. And so mm -hmm. I was like, eh, whatever. And so I went back to Mario and I was playing Mario. I'm like, I told, I, you know, like even when I said it before, I was like, I'm really early in the game. I don't, you know, I'm not super getting hooked on it. There's not like a lot for me to do right now. So I'm not worried about it, but I'll come back to it and I'll give it a you know full go. So I came back to it and I gave it a full go <laughs> and it's, it's pretty cool. Like I finally left the, like after leaving the actual plateau Island thing, whatever <laughs> tutorial world, um, it got really fun, especially once you got the glider, the glider made everything like way more entertaining for me because there's oh, yeah. so much, there's so many interesting things to do. They, oh, they also like start giving you more unique things to like use like um, more physics puzzle, like yes. things, different ways to do your physics puzzles. They give you like all that stuff starts unlocking like really rapidly after that. So mm -hmm. it really changed uh, like that aspect of it, like how you attack each area is really unique. You know, each time um, you can handle it, it's clear that you can handle it all, all sorts of different ways. Um, but mm -hmm. it still feels kind of empty in a lot of respects. I like it. I still really like it, but there's a lot of dead space. And I don't know if that's just them trying to capture the music and the feel of you going from point to point, you know, uh, a la Shadow of the Colossus, right? Um, mm -hmm. But it just doesn't feel as dense. Like, I feel like if they would have comp uh, compacted a lot of the areas, it would feel more lush if that makes any sense i think and i i think you'll get an appreciation of the way it's laid out a little bit a, a little bit further uh there okay. are certain things they do in this game that they couldn't pull off if they made the map a little more condensed this space right. allows you to do some of my favorite stuff where it's get to a high ass point <clears throat> look around and glide on out to a right. point that you think looks cool right and i, I never did that. I, I never I, felt that the the world in Breath of the Wild was empty. Like in in Skyrim, I could run around, and, you know, I'd see some like low level enemies peppered everywhere, but I I never felt like the world was alive. But in Breath of the Wild, if I'm running through a forest, I've, eventually I'll run into some people, you know, hunting truffles or something, and I have to save them from monsters. I I never right. felt like the world wasn't alive. So so I think this is this is what and again this is what I'm going to hold off on because like I say that now because I can tell I'm in an area where maybe it's supposed to feel more vast. Like right now I went north. As soon as I landed I went straight north and where that took me was a little village and then all around it was a big area with a lot of horseback riding. So I'm thinking like oh this must be the horse area. So this is the area people ride horses on. So it's just planes, like big, you know, rolling uh, planes for the most part. So it's supposed to be empty. It's supposed to be just like a couple dudes on a horse, maybe like five or six other random horses strewn about, but no bushes, no rocks, no, you know, discernible landmarks, just like planes because you're a horse guy and you do horse things. And that's what I'm experiencing right now. Um, Horse maybe, there's guy. maybe there's another direction I could have chosen <laughs> that takes me to more of a, you know, more of a lush forest or something like that. But right now, the only two places I've seen is uh, a winter area, which was pretty barren, like lots of hills, but for the most part, not a lot of, not not a lot there. And then the big empty plains. 
Yeah, so you like, went to some of the most open areas. There is a lot right. of super dense areas when it comes to forestry. I thought you were just talking character interaction wise. It was no, close. no character interaction has been awesome. Like so far, that's that's the part I like. Everything that I've that I've gone through and experienced so far, as far as dialogue, everything's pretty interesting. The the so like I was saying, like as soon as I left the area I was at, I started getting like a real purpose there's actual things i get to do now and i'm and it, it's it's like really made not following the path a little bit better right <laughs> so like i'll just go off in a random direction but i know eventually i'll go if i go in one of those four directions let's say mm -hmm. um i'll end up at some sort of destination but i can hit things along the way you know zigzagging throughout you know opening chests you know yeah. getting over cumbered all that stuff this is why this is my <laughs> favorite Zelda game to date. I mean, most Zelda mm -hmm. games, I mean, don't get me wrong. I thought they were okay. Ocarina mm -hmm. is what it is. It's just this really grabbed me away and none other did because what you just said. Do what the fuck you want, man. And yeah, all, it, other, uh, all other Zelda games except for... Games. Yeah, all the other Zelda games except for Zelda 1 were fairly linear. Like, right. you could deviate a little bit. Like, I'm going to do this temple before I do this temple and vice <laughs> right. versa. But... I, nothing has ever said, hey, your objective is to go defeat Ganon. Um, do Have that, fun. I guess. Okay, go. <laughs> yeah. <guess>. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I never, and I didn't get that. And that's actually what, like, when I started, I, it didn't say defeat Ganon. It didn't say that. So I was like, ah, I don't know what they're talking about. This is just <laughs> weird. I see the thing in the distance. That's probably Ganon. I need to defeat him at some point, but I'm just going to continue wandering around this plateau. There's like a bunch of things that you could reach. You could reach the snowy area without leaving the plateau. Um, you can do a whole bunch of crazy shit without leaving the plateau, <clears throat> but um, well, Dobby says he spent you, eight hours on the fucking plateau. Yeah, I spent forever on, knowing him. Yeah, I mean, I, I spent, spent forever, like an hour, maybe two hours. No, I spent a, I spent longer than that. I was there for like four sessions Oof. at least. After I realized and I was unlocking stuff at those shrines, I was going to those first four shrines as quick as possible to get these shit. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what exactly what I ended up doing after that. But I didn't go into the shrines first. So like, hey, there's probably cool shit up here. And I'm like, oh, cool. Wood cutting axe. Let's like lop this tree down. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> and that's what I was doing. <laughs> that was my entire Zelda experience. Like it was cool, but it wasn't anything like groundbreaking. So, mm -hmm. so you played it exactly like Miyamoto did with his dev team. He said, holy shit, you can climb all the trees. Yeah, ship it. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Best game ever, ten out of ten. He's such a three-year-old sure the way he attacks games. Yeah, he's I'm... such a goddamn genius. I don't get it. He said, "Wait a minute, you can climb all the trees." Yeah, this is great. Keep going in this direction. Like, holy shit! How do you connect? You can climb all the trees with this is going to be a fantastic gaming experience. I there's don't probably understand. there's probably more than that. Sure. He probably there's has a, lot a pretty of good. It's a little more than that. He probably is a little bit more knowledgeable. Like. Uh, there's another total tangent I can go off on, but I'm going to spare you that. We'll go on that <laughs> on a private time, but um, I think that, but that's pretty much all I've been playing. I really want to hold like, you know, I want to hold my opinions on this game until I get deeper into it. Cause it seems like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I knew that it was a premature opinion to begin with, mm -hmm. uh, but now I think it's even more so. So I want to see where this game takes me and, if it livens up a little bit, if they if there's more like bigger bosses, more epic encounters, then I, and I'm sure there is. Um, we'll see how I feel about it once that time comes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's right I, to wait. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. I cannot wait till you stumble upon your first rock. Okay, Irk knows first what I rock. mean. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The game has Fair a enough. lot of beautiful surprises. Yeah, there's some cool stuff so far. So like I, you know, little spidery things like you know laser beams that one shot you all good good times but we'll see uh we'll see what, <laughs> what comes of these things later on yeah i've been playing a little bit of switch too um oh, yeah? but something different okay um hit me with it so i used to watch souls dark soul invader uh play um the darkest dungeon i've always been kind of interested um but I never played it. And I was like, eh, this kind of game, I don't really want to sit down and play at the computer right now. I got Rock League, all this shit. It's out on the Switch, Deluxe Edition, so I pick it up. This game's really fucking good, and fuck, it's really goddamn hard. <laughs> I've heard that game is really difficult. Like, yeah, really, it is. really difficult. Yeah, it's um, really, um, I don't know how to say it, brutal? 
Yeah, brutal. Brutal's the word. Um, so you have these different abilities that are hidden on your character. They just kind of get revealed, kind of revealed over time, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But like if bad stuff starts happening, all of a sudden after you get out of this dungeon, like, oh, here's a new ability. Your person now gets scared easier or something like that. Um, There's, um... So they stay permanently on it. So... So that, that's that's interesting that you bring up Darkest Dungeon because our special guest here has a few things to say about Darkest Dungeon. Wait, we have a special guest? We do have a special guest for the first time. You guys didn't in... tell me about that. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, we kept that from you. Oh, Dark okay. Soul. No, don't have that, <laughs> that level of clearance. Yeah, no. Um, someday. Dark Soul's <laughs> here with us now to talk about Darkest Dungeon. Hello. Hey. Hey, Dark Soul. Welcome How's to the going? podcast. Thank you. It's so cool to be here. <laughs> so Actually, um, you've put a lot of time in this game. I have put a lot of time in this game. I Let me check Steam right now. I can tell you exactly how many hours I have. Um, that's in between runs because, uh, as you saw probably when you started the game, I don't know what version the Switch is running. Uh, the game originally launched with one difficulty, and the game is very hard. Like, very hard. Yes. Um, and people knew that when it came out, so they actually bothered the devs to put in an easier mode. Oh, nice. <laughs> and so there's, um, the original mode, which is hard. Then there's an easier mode, which gives you a bit more loot. And then there's a harder mode actually that they even added that puts you on a time limit to beat the game. Oh, a what? Time limit? Oh, you, Jesus. Yeah. You Hold can only do on. so many runs until you beat the game. Yeah. Oh, so many. That's Jesus. insane. Yeah, so, so you it's, have it's, like it's this like, yeah. hub that you base out of, and then you do yes. runs into the dungeon and keep coming back to this hub. So if people die out of your group, they're dead for good. And then you have to Yo, hire shit. someone else in. Yes. Holy crap. So when you're on a time limit, it immediately makes it harder because you got to rush getting better things, which means you have to take risks. You have to go into harder dungeons quicker to get better items quicker. That's so sick. Damn. And it's so can, really can you guys kind of describe, uh, describe exactly how the game works? Kind oh, of what it is. Souls. All right. So basically, the way the game works is it's a it's a turn based game. It's a rogue like, not rogue light, but a rogue like game. Mm -hmm. So rogue like, as in it's based off of the old old rogue game, just called Rogue, I think. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. means yep. that it's um, you have an overworld which you have to take care of, which is why you're going into the dungeon, and mm -hmm. you have an actual gameplay element into it, which is the dungeon runs. So the game puts you off with just a couple of characters and you find out basically that you are an heir to an estate. So your whole, you find like a group of two people and you're going to this dark estate, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. And um, you find out that uh, the previous owner just so happened to unearth a couple of portals to some dark dimensions, you know, just releasing <laughs> some horrific and evil creatures Doom, on the way. Doom style. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's nothing that Doom wouldn't show life. up on a... It, nothing that wouldn't show up on a, a standard housing inspection. No, right. yeah, no, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, um, you guys may want to uh, take care of this portal. And it's okay, we'll cut 5000 off the price. So we'll, we'll let the buyer take care of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like that. A portal to hell? Yeah, that, that's, that's standard. That's fine. <laughs> that's included. That's just the guest room. That's, yeah. that's listed under the features. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we call that the mother-in-law suite. Oh. It's a <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, don't say that when I'm drinking, man. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Two plus bedrooms. Multiple. The game has uh, four different areas. Hmm. All actually it has a couple more, depending on if you have DLC. There's uh, a <laughs> anyway. So you get to this, you get to this main area, which is the hub, which you gotta upkeep and you upgrade to get your characters leveled up and get better yeah. items, better abilities, uh, different classes of characters. There's a lot of classes of characters, and on top of that, uh, Steam has mods, so I can mod in a lot of really really cool characters that the community came up with. Fuck you. No mods. No, that's that's <laughs> Can you get oh yeah, this is a, you're in a you're in a really weird situation, right, Eric? You're a, you're a console plebe, and Dark Souls not. Oh. What's going on? What's, oh, what's going on is I get to play Darkest Dungeon on the bus. I get to play it on the train. I but get he to gets play to play as Macho Man Randy Savage this year. <laughs> <laughs> so he's okay. got you beat. Yeah. That trumps all portability. <laughs> 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 
he can play as like Hatsune Miku. I'm sure there's a. I don't oh, know, there's like... so many anime. Anime <laughs> yeah, I bet there is. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> One thing I will say about the combat: it's turn based, but it's also um, it's uh, location based. Um, certain mm-hmm. yeah. you, you have four people, and it's a straight line. So you have front, middle, middle, back, and some people can only. Mm-hmm attack certain areas of the other team with certain attacks so Mm -hmm. everyone has like four Mm -hmm. attacks your melee guy might have one that's heavy hitting can only hit the first two people you choose one of them he'll have a lighter one that can damage two people and it could be anyone in the first three rows you may have a range attack that can only hit the back person so you have a lot of strategy in your attacks because certain people can only hit certain things whoa okay Okay. so that sounds like that's uh, a really cool uh (laughs) added depth to turn based so combat. there's a chance that you could have a guy that is just handcuffed there yep literally there's a chance that there are abilities that the enemies can use to <clears throat> scramble your character order and if they do oh. that it could potentially put one of your characters in a spot where you have to just pass their turn yep. they can't wow. do anything can you move them oh. you can move them but that, i mean they, that's basically a pass like you you only have one action per turn uh, okay most of the time you only have one action per turn and movement is considered an action. So there was another okay. game that had that sort of like distance, and that was like a Monster Rancher. I don't know if you guys have ever played that, where like you I had a series of attacks. It. Yeah, well, no, this one's it's actually good. Um, <laughs> you can what? when you're Come in, on, when you're that in, show was great. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so that no, <laughs> like when you play in the actual arenas, um, your character only has like certain his certain attacks based off of space. So if you're, you know, you have to be a certain distance from your opponent to fire off an attack. So it's really interesting how that whole combat worked. So like you can't do like a your big epic move like right up in this face. So you have to like space yourself. And alternatively, the opponent can try to block you out of those moves by keep by closing the gap. It's really interesting. Mm. Yeah, but there's um, similar... yeah. So yeah, go ahead. I say there's I say a lot there's of similar that. things to that. Yeah, um, there are certain moves in that game that actually attack while moving your position. So let's say you have like a, I have specifically, I have a chick who is, uh, wields a double handed battle axe. And if I can get her to the third position, I can use a move that moves her up two spaces and does a lot of damage to whoever I pick to hit. I mean, I think it only hits like the first two people on the other side because the mm-hmm. monsters have an order as well that they have to be, which brings into the fact that you have abilities to move them around as well. So if you see an archer or a gunman on their side, I'm going to try my best to bring them up to the front so that way they either miss or they just can't shoot me. That's as well really as, cool. That's cool. You can nice. also pull them up, not necessarily to nerf them, but they have a heavy fucking hitter in the front. Pull them in front of them to push the heavy hitter back. Oh, that's okay. really cool. So then they have to waste a turn to shuffle their guys around again. That's yep. really cool. That's a, that's such a cool mechanic, and I haven't seen it. So you're you're mixing two of my favorite games of all time, as far as mechanics are concerned. One of them is a uh, Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter with the uh, with the run that's timed, like the game that's timed, and then you're mm-hmm. doing Monster Rancher <laughs> with the uh, mechanic of fighting. That's really cool. Yeah. It can get really intimidating because there's a lot of numbers with a lot of different shit like your different attacks do damage percentages or nerf them damage percentages wise you have different um hexes essentially i'll say like bleeding blight and stuff like that where percentage chance Mm -hmm. of it happening you have like a bard character that only enhances and nerfs people so there is a lot of complexity in the combat that i'm not used to seeing in a game and it's not like you can walk into it it is bam you step one foot in you are balls deep into this shit Good luck. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, that that's like how the dungeon keep track of and remember. Yeah. Unless, of course, you're playing on PC, in which case there's a mod that actually kind of organizes all the damage numbers and everything a bit more. Just Fuck that. Just, you know, Damn. Damn. <laughs> I'm not knowing That's really nice. I think if I were to get it, I would definitely get it on PC. This is the sounds of things. Yeah. It sounds like there's, there's, there's no way. way. No way I would buy it on a on a console. That just seems... I don't know why in, you would do that at all. In the Switch's defense, though, the game is very mobile-friendly because it's start mm-hmm. and stop. Like, you can literally stop in the middle of a fight. You can just exit the game and restart the game, and it'll load you right back up into the fight at the exact same oh. moment. Okay, oh, actually, wow. kind of to cool. the point, I had someone die that I really liked, and I'm like, well, fuck this. Turn Did it off. Save try to turn it back on. The game doesn't let you do it. Oh, no. the game <laughs> will not let you cheat the system. If someone dies, they're gone, sucker. That's what you get, Eric. 
You deserve yeah, that. You Man, deserve that loss. Through, instead of going <laughs> just, to the easy, you know mode, why you deserve like, that? Fuck. You deserve that because of the the old the old lady that you pushed down the ladder. That's yeah, why you deserve you did, that. Eh? You, you punched. <laughs> you punched her husband in the face for no reason. She fell. Darkest, <laughs> she darkest she she fell. She <laughs> tripped. Darkest Tell it to the judge. Knew what was going on, <laughs> and that's why it happened. But no, who did you I'm, lose? Uh, it was uh, the paladin dude you start with. You don't name your characters? Uh, I didn't know you could. I'm not ah, that far, I'm not that oh, far into it, man. so I'm still well, uncovering you can do that systems. At the beginning. Well, no, I'm just um, saying I'm still digging around. To me, there's certain areas I try to focus on. Knowing uh, that okay. I'm going to not do well in a certain time around, I'll focus on, let me learn this system. Uh, okay. It's going to punish me, but I'm going to learn this system. So I'm okay. checking out the the workshop and what's available. There's some cool stuff in here. I'm seeing that like, I'm seeing like you can play you can play against a kraken. That's pretty mm. sick. You can Are also you sure have you can all play the... against it or can you skin it? Because a it's lot of a... times it's a skin. Oh uh, well, I'm just you can looking play at it as a crack. Ooh, is it the revenant? Is it the weird looking? No, scourge. He's like kind of green, right? Yeah. Well, this That's one's this one's purple. Against. This is purple. this is a purple looking thing. It's called Unleash the Kraken, a new I enemy. Believe. Oh, it is an enemy. new enemy for the cove. It's pretty dope. There's also uh, you can have the sirens with their with their hair dyed. All the important mods are here and yeah. accounted for. You said about <laughs> skinning the kraken, and that automatically made me think about skinning all these fucking elder dragons recently in hunt. Oh, really? That's because <laughs> it's just like, damn it! I had a round where I killed one of the big monsters. It took me fucking forever. These little goddamn things kept jumping around, hitting me to where I couldn't actually harvest the pieces of them before the time ran out. Oh, I went through all this process of killing this huge ass monster, and these little fuckers keep hitting me to where I can't harvest it. It's like you <laughs> oh, sons of bitches, little bastards. So, so Dark Soul, you finished the game, right? Isn't that what I heard? You, I've you... not personally beat it, but I because there's one boss at the there. I thought I beat it right. Um, it goes into the very last couple of dungeons. It's called the Darkest Dungeon, which Eric probably can see, and it's a level six. And level six is the max level, so you got to get at least four characters to level six, which takes a lot of time. Okay. Um, I have not beat it because you have to do the last dungeon run. You have to beat a certain amount of bosses, basically, and I just haven't beat that number of bosses because they're very, they're hard. And I've lost people, you know. Like, I I believe both Tom and Dadum died in my game. Cause I oh, you named him oh, oh, you named <laughs> That's yeah. so cool. It's awesome. It's like Oregon Trail too. Honored. Holy shit! It has yes. everything. Yes. <laughs> we die of dysentery. Um, no, I believe uh, you died of poison, and I think Tom <laughs> got his head chopped off. So yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Tom probably it's tried to ford the river. The wagon flipped over and decapitated him. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely a. Tom Wait, one. Mortal Kombat Oregon Trail. Oh, are, you just, are you just googling things? <laughs> are you use Scorpion's got, um, hook. To like pull the raft across the river. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be cool, like there. an in-depth Oregon Trail where you could actually utilize it, like every character's like unique abilities. It's like a there a game, was there was like a zombie game river. called Oregon Trail? Yes, yes Renee. Oh, there was. Yeah, yeah Renee and I played through that. Uh, Is that any good? Uh, it was actually pretty fun. Uh, I wouldn't go back to it as I have a lot of replay value, but it was a good mm -hmm. time. Was <laughs> it uh, nostalgia bait? Um, it, yes and no. It was kind of, hey, everybody's into zombies. Hey, everybody loves Oregon Trail. Let's make Zombie Trail. And <laughs> it was okay. It was like a three dollar game or something. So yeah, hmm. it's good nice. for an evening. So so Dark Souls. So since you, before we uh, let you go and 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 continue your run through the darkest of dungeons, um, what do you think? What do you think of it? Would you who would you recommend this to? What do you? Is it a who would I recommend it to? I'd recommend to anyone who really likes to try hard and also not be too mad if the game just cheats you because the game, the skill ceiling is not that high. You can learn it pretty quickly, but mm -hmm. it's very easy to just lose off of a bad roll. Like there's some mm -hmm. parts where you can just lose. You've done nothing wrong. You've played it perfectly. And the, the, the other team just crits you four times and you're dead. Like that's it. Jesus. Oh yeah. We didn't really say the Our damage and hitting and everything is dice rolls. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can see that. <laughs> it's for someone who won't mind that and is also, you know, he likes the turn based strategy, likes looking at the battlefield, looking at your skills, uh managing a city. 
Uh, it's very grindy. You got to go through a lot of time. You got to stack up a lot of gold and resources to build your town because you, you need materials as well to continue upgrading your city. Mm-hmm. So it's somewhat of a grind. So someone who really likes grind, who likes a difficult challenge, um, not too mad if the game cheats you, and uh, really likes the gothic art style. The art style is beautiful and the music is pretty good, as well as the voiceovers. I would say if yeah. you like Civ and you like Isaac Faster Than Light style, either of those type with Civ, you'll like this. That's it's, little, yeah. it's got a lot of management sure. to it. From what nice. I yes. That's awesome. Well, thanks, uh, Dark Soul, for coming on and talking about the darkest of dungeons, man. It was, it was great to be really, here. really super awesome to have Wait, you here. Before you go, though, we, we got to talk because you won our team a victory royale. In, in oh Fortnite yeah i forgot oh, there's something right. else we should probably yeah i forgot about that that was cool yeah you just fucking wrecked everyone so we were playing on i forget what what's the new mode called where everyone solid gets gold. legendary solid gold uh so it's standard Fortnite battle royale except any weapon you pick up is gold level is oh standard, what like yeah it's the highest uh version of that weapon so oh. you don't have to worry like that somebody has got you know a bunch of high powered gear and you've got you know uh grays because everyone is on the even playing field as far as uh weapon um status goes i like that actually a lot better because the most frustrating part about fortnite for me is i don't like the gun mechanics and that being i don't like the gun mechanics of the lower level guns yeah uh, uh, that's really you should, you should revisit because they did change the gun mechanics yeah they have changed them a bit yeah, we should we should check that out, Adam. We should we should play some solid gold. It was a lot of fun. I actually got some kills. Uh, I played way better than I have before, which means like I shot a guy. Uh, it was it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He actually uh, confirmed he was killing a guy while I was killing a team. Yeah, nice. it was oh, fun. Shit. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, see, I, 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 took on, I took on like a guy, one guy in Dark Soul and Bear. It's like I don't know. I think I'm just gonna build this ramp and jump in and just murder everyone down here. <laughs> it's like okay, I'm gonna keep sniping this one guy. <laughs> Have fun, and then you won. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, Souls awesome. tends to be good with shooters. I remember the first time he jumped in with Rainbow Six, didn't know the fucking yeah. map, he gets like three kills in his first round. Yeah, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dark Dark Soul, uh, where can people find you? Because I know you're a pretty prolific streamer. It's somewhere in the, like the top three, right? Oh, I think that's what I heard too. Oh, no, yeah. he's top. He's top Number one in a top one in a in the world, from what I yeah. understand. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> easily number one. Ninja <laughs> Doctor Disrespect ain't got nothing on me. That's right. Yeah, uh, you can find me at uh, twitch.tv forward slash Dark Soul Invader. And I actually recently like underwent a total revamp of the channel. Changed my overlays. Changed my logo. Changed my banner. Changed just about everything. Yeah, it's make it say, as I'm cool as on possible. It right now, it looks really nice. That's yeah, a pretty think, dank logo. Yeah, I think that little logo in the, in the middle right there, that's your new that's your new logo. If anybody yeah. hasn't seen it yet, here's a here's a big press release for you. <laughs> <laughs> LS72. Wait, press release? This is the really logo people reveal. People look at us? <laughs> yeah, people look at us. This is this yeah. is a big deal. You don't understand like Tom, you don't 11. you yourself should understand how big of a deal this cast is. I do. I do. We have hundreds of thousands of paid viewers. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Paid by the minute. Yeah. Paid by the they minute. They actually order these on pay per view. Yeah. This is this they is do. this is on all the uh, paid per view situations. Yeah. Where, where else could you see you know a, a nearly thirty year old man getting bare chested, blasted on grain alcohol, talking <laughs> about video games? <laughs> <laughs> Only here on seventy two. Only Pink on Pink. Twitch. <laughs> anyway, Dark Soul, thanks for coming on, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you thank you so much. Absolutely, yeah. everyone, check him out on uh, on Twitch TV slash Dark Soul Invader. We got his um, Twitch link up there in the chat, so everyone should go give him a click. Give him a click. Give him a follow. Give him. I don't know. Your twenty five dollars subs. Only twenty five dollars oh, subs. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. No cheap <laughs> shit in here. We hire yeah. boys in this joint. <laughs> Everyone's coming soon, though. Hey, there you go. More reason to get the $25 subs. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for coming on, Souls. Thank you guys so much for having me. Take care. Bye. See you, Souls. See you guys. Ah, I love that guy. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Dark Souls is awesome. He appears on our shows fairly regularly, so, you know. <laughs>
Yeah, if you uh, really? watch us stream random games, you'll probably hear him in the Discord. Probably with seen us. him around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, You're probably probably watching him carry the rest of our team in Fortnite. Uh -huh. <laughs> and let's be honest. If you're in chat right now, you probably already play games with Souls. So yeah, that is true. Fair enough. But if anyway. you're listening to the podcast, <laughs> it's Souls. It's so so, Irk, other other than Darkest Dungeon, do you have anything else that you've been you've been playing? I know you got into some Monster Hunter a couple weeks ago. Been still constant. I'm 77 hours. I've slowed down a little bit because I was a little busy this week. 77 hours in, starting to what I... Okay, I'm not going to lie. I thought the last big fucking thing I did was going to be the end. But now, I am pretty sure these last three fuckers <laughs> I'm tracking down are the top three guys in the goddamn game. I'm Wait, can we, okay. can we get a tally on the screen or something for how many times Eric has said that I'm done with... Uh... <laughs> no, I'm never yeah. done because it, I enjoy the be, fuck out of this. It would be really nearing the amount of times that I have officially quit Dota 2. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a lot of hours. Um, seventy-seven. Instead of that's banging my head against the wall and just failing and failing and failing and failing and failing and finally getting it, I'm like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna grind out some monsters, get some better gear, and then go back at it." Like mm -hmm. most people yeah. do, which is why the game right. takes so long. If I was to just SOS all of these and play with people, it wouldn't take mm -hmm. that long. Oh, which, okay. Okay, I do want to get on this real quick. They have a great online system. Some people were railing against it. I find it fantastic. So I'm playing alone. I'm just going all of a sudden like, man, this monster just killed me. I'm restarting this quest. And you, I'm just like, you know what? I just got to get through this guy. I'm going to hit start. I'm going to go to fire off SOS. Boom. Instantly, it registers my game to the online servers. So anyone who wants to fight this monster can see it and jump in with me immediately. I don't need to yeah, know them. Yeah. They don't need mm. to know me. They just jump right in. That's pretty Very nice. Cool. It is so nice because I'm on Xbox. Um, I have a couple people that have it, not many. So then I just fire this off. Random people jump in. As well as I'm like, you know what? I need to kill some Ange. I go to the quest board. I say, I want to help someone out. I want to find an Ange. Oh, here is the 10 quests going right now. Okay, I'll choose that one. Boom. In grinding. Nice. It's a really pop, cool. good pop in, pop out multiplayer experience when it comes to that. Yeah, I, I was That's thinking good. that this would this would be great in a game like Dark Souls. You can say, "Hey, I'm I'm fighting the the Colossus, or I'm fighting uh, Ornstein and Smo. I, I would like some help with this," but I don't I don't think it would fit in with the world. As well as, yeah. do you really get benefits? Because part of the thing isn't necessarily I'm doing this to help someone. It's I'm doing mm -hmm. this because I want the gear. That that monster drops. Like I need to kill you this do. thing like a hundred times. Well, that's the, I mean that's yeah that's you get what, the souls, you get humanity or embers or whatever you're but doing. That, is that specific to the person? What I'm yeah, saying this is, is yeah yeah this is this is you going like that's what that's what this game's all about. That's what Monster Hunter is about. Is you going in and you're gonna grind a monster until you get a shiny new hat, and then when you're done with this shiny new hat, you're gonna go kill another monster for its shiny new hat, and then you're gonna rinse and repeat. That is Monster Hunter in a nutshell. It's not like you don't you don't play through Monster Hunter for the story. You don't play through Monster Hunter like that's the game is for you to you know keep grinding through a monster until you know it's you know every single like you know curvature of its body, so, every little. Yeah. So you <laughs> you go you keep killing a monster until you've committed monster genocide essentially and make it yep. extinct on the planet. Yep. So what yeah. then you go, these then you monsters do to you in the first place? Why did they deserve this? Irk's an anti-vegan, like, whereas vegans, you know, don't want to hurt any, you know, use anything from any living creature. Uh, mm -hmm. Irk is only interested in the suffering of animals and monsters. Oh, Absolutely. okay. Yeah. But, all right. Okay. So that's, all, have, that's all fallen in place now. I need to bring this up That makes quick. sense. You said about mm -hmm. hunting them to genocide. Have any of you guys played Dino Crisis 2 back on the PS1? Way, uh, way back. Yeah, that way was back. So no, I think I, I think I played the first one. I don't think I didn't. Didn't the second one like completely change the format of the game? It was like Resident Evil, the second one. Yeah, I thought the first one was like Resident Evil. They you were gotta, both like you Resident Evil. Choose your own <laughs> adventure all, everything's like Resident the Evil. The first See, one. I gave thought you a at bit some point options. they changed the series and it was more like an action game. That Not was like later. A, I want to say well, that was Dino Crisis Three. There's a lot of shooting into a whole lot of shooting into Three was in space. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Of course it was. Because, you, you know, why, why wouldn't not? it be? So uh, what I wanted to get at, though, um, you said about genocide in Monster Hunter or in Monster Hunter. Holy shit! In Dino Crisis Two, you can actually hunt an area out for the drops so much that you make the dinosaurs go extinct in that area, and they will never spawn the rest of the game in that area. Do you know? You know what else does that? And we don't ever talk about Dark Souls. Do do people they respawn though, and then they eventually no. If you fight, if you fight an area long enough, those guys just won't spawn back. Oh, really? Yep. That's useful information because I just started playing Dark Souls three. Holy oh, shit. shit. <laughs> are we about to talk about that? Oh my yeah, God. we are. So uh, yeah, you guys are. have fun. I'm going to go get a drink, relax for a little bit, okay. take a nap. Go do your taxes. <laughs> no, uh, we'll, be, we'll be here in three hours. I don't hours. have a lot to talk about. So so just so you guys know, the uh, we have a note sheet. And in this note sheet, it says, we'll talk for eight hours about this. <laughs> in parentheses just kidding just kidding started with the game so hey, i don't read parentheses that's an optional component of a season not optional. <laughs> so, so, hold on. They're literally is, optional are we gonna are we gonna have a dark souls stream because josh we've been yeah. we've been really lacking on our dark souls stuff we so have. can we get me and you and adam and in far cause like all in the same lobby and just power through dark souls 3 yeah i mean i'm working i mean kind of yeah. We can all hmm. be sunbros together. We just need to go. And- does that does that cheese the system a little bit? Like, does it make it easier by just like it having does. a shitload? Yeah, you, you does. distract this person, and then we'll just backstab him, and the game will be easy. No. So you just Kinda, described yeah. all of Josh and I's stream. Have you <laughs> watched our stream? Did you watch? Yeah, it's <laughs> <That's where I laughs> basically all we do. That defeats the purpose of Dark Souls, though, isn't the the whole point of the game to be? Yeah, you play through uh, by yourself afterwards, and oh, then you talk okay. about it separately. This one, you just go through Lulzy, and one person plays a cleric and r- regrets the decision throughout See, the whole run. I would think run. it would be better experience backwards <laughs> when you go through it first by yourself, and then... It, yeah, it that is a better way to do it. That's easily okay. the best way That's to what do I've it. started. Yeah, yeah, do that. So I'm like, what, uh, an hour? I think I played an hour. So nice. I'm not very far. I got to the Firelink Shrine, and I got... Uh, I kind of went through a little bit of that, whatever area it's called that you teleport to after the Firelink Shrine for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. Some dude starts with an L. It's the castle Lothric? thing. Lothric. Yes, Lothric Castle. Sure. So, so, just, so what, did, what did you think about your your tutorial boss right there before Firelink that was, Shrine? That was cool. That was... Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. Big ass dude in armor. What is that? Yeah. And then <laughs> it was no longer a dude in armor. And that was really, that was one of the, the, one of the biggest reasons I really picked up this game. And one of the, the reasons I've thought this whole, all of the from software games are cool is their monster design is so good. The enemy mm-hmm. design and everything with the music and the levels and everything, uh, really really cool so i'm i really wanted to just see what all the bosses are and trying to figure them out is fun mm-hmm. i'm really bad uh my only experience with dark souls is like the first game and it was only for a couple hours maybe i never really got into it that much right, but right. i got this on the humble bundle cheap it was 12 bucks also came with a dlc so i'm gonna oh, yeah. try to run through it all hopefully yeah, that'll be awesome. And then when uh, when the re- remake comes out, we should uh, talk about that one because I am <laughs> indeed so excited yeah. for that. And then, oh yeah, I'm and so by the ready. way, Dark my Soul body does, is ready. Dark Soul does post um, uh, useful information. Bosses scale uh, on how many people are playing, and you get less mm-hmm. reward per mm-hmm. for more people. That is true. All right. So, so but um, it's, we I'm, just play I'm a moving. Lulzy run. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that sometime. But I'll Absolutely. be streaming a solo run at some point too. Hell um, yes! Dark Souls talk is now over. I am not going to talk what? talk about it anymore. What else are you playing? Quick segue into it. What are you playing? What did you play? What else did I play? <laughs> games. Played some games. Dark Souls. I played some uh, <laughs> Rainbow Six Siege with uh, Eric. Nice. Last yeah. weekend. Dark Souls last weekend was a free weekend, so we actually had a chance. We stood a chance a little bit with the competition. Uh-huh. Got some kills. Did some games. Love oh, that yeah. game a lot. Uh, played some Rocket League yesterday, nice. as normal. That's not new, 
but I had a lot of fun playing. And then I signed up for PlayStation Now. There's a free trial. Oh, so. nice. oh nice. So I wanted to I wanted to check out the service. I wanted to see how it worked and what it all was. So I uh, I haven't had a whole lot of time to dive into it because my dumb ass bought more games after that. But <laughs> hey, I bought a streaming service with a lot of games on it. What am I going to do next? Buy yeah, games. I only have seven days on this free trial. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and buy a different game and start playing it. So nice. that's, that's how my yeah. brain works. But um, I was looking <laughs> at the catalog. Great. There's some cool stuff on there, really. Uh, yeah. If I had the service longer, I would probably play through some. Some of the ones I was interested in, and they're not all PlayStation exclusives, but one of the reasons is I wanted to see the PlayStation exclusives that were on it. Um, mm. But everyone's gone to the Rapture. It's, uh, it's like a walking oh, right. simulator, right. but supposedly it's got really good music and a cool story. Uh, the Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which... I've heard a lot of good things about, but I've never actually played. So I might try to dive into that a little bit during it's this one of the newest indie darlings to hit. Yeah, you know, you know, what you need to do, and I mm -hmm. want you to stream it if at all possible. Go on there and play video game roulette. This is what me oh, and man. my wife used to do a lot. Uh -huh. You just hold left, hold down, hold left again, hold right, and then whatever you land on is what you're gonna get. Wow! And you have yeah. to play it. It's so fun because you end That's up with cool. playing some yeah. stupid ass. Like we played like, well, we played Tokyo jungle, which was like, I guess semi well-known, but like it was like one game I would have never played. And we played as mm -hmm. a, you know, and we ended up playing as like a Corgi trying to, you know, rule the world. It was really weird yeah. <laughs> or no, a uh, Pomeranian. That's even worse. We're playing as a Pomeranian <laughs> trying to take on like Velociraptors or some shit. Oh, hell yeah. Check it out. It's great. That sounds awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of PlayStation exclusive indies on there uh it's like the god of war series i saw red dead redemption on there which kind of i kind of like to go back and just play through that for like 30 minutes or something um on, there's like a, an uncharted game one or two of those uh the last of us is on there mm -hmm. uh, shadow of the colossus is on there there's just, just a lot of cool stuff uh it's a cool service i didn't notice like bad performance i think the max it'll stream is 720p unfortunately how is that uh, it all streams Input lag, uh, noticeable, but it's not bad. It's not unplayable. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't try to play competitive Street Fighter or anything on it. But could you play through <laughs> a shooter, just campaign, not multiplayer, but a campaign of a shooter? On One it. thing I haven't done is tried to play a first-person game yet on it. So, so I will check that on, out at some point. You're playing this on your PC. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing it on PC. So that's worth noting because that's kind of yeah. The, that new. was that's the that's biggest new... draw I think would be is that people who don't have a PlayStation can still play some of the PlayStation exclusive content. Maybe not the latest and greatest, but there are some stuff. There is uh, there are some games on there for that. And I don't um, think the limitation on not having the latest and greatest has to do with them trying to make their library exclusive because Microsoft's mm -hmm. actually doing some of their latest or heh, funny uh, their stuff on their service. But I think right. since this is a streaming service, they just can't push that tech to play like mm. Horizon Zero Dawn streamed. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. You could, though. So you could. It's, all, it's all in the protocol. So what they're probably doing is they're probably doing UDP RTMP streams. I'm getting nerdy here. Um, <laughs> which, you know, to make a really good gaming experience, probably requires 720p for the majority of players to take advantage of. But if you have something like the BUD part uh protocol that parsec made parsec gaming um i mean i i push you know 1200 by whatever for overwatch with you know minimal lag I, I don't even notice it compared to running locally on my system um so it's, it's all about the protocol but but it's not just that part of it i'm thinking what I'm also visualizing is they have servers stood up just for people to play, and these games aren't non-intensive. PlayStation mm -hmm. isn't in the business of let's stand up an entire data center so people can stream our games. Oh, there's a there's a line. I've got caught in this before. If you get if you try to connect in and it's like during a high traffic period, you get put in line. Same mm -hmm. thing like with yeah. certain okay. games. I did so see you, that you, when you, I started it up. Yeah, you'll you'll like if it's during like a high traffic period, you'll get put in a queue and then you get to launch into that game at a certain point. And I can only you imagine know. the newer and better the games, the less people that can play at yeah. once. Unless right, they and more and money. on the place and on the PlayStation, I don't know if this happens with this game, but it stores a little bit of content on your end, 
And I don't mm. know what that content is, but it shows that there's a little bit of content stored. So I don't know what that it's sort of probably back save game data and stuff like it that. It might just be save game data, but I'm not sure. That's so, where I would know. love to see them do what Microsoft's doing, where we're not going to let you stream it. We're just going to have you download it. And then you can mm. be offline and play. Yeah. You can do whatever you want with it. But at the end, if we say that you're no longer a valid user, we'll get rid of it off your machine. Yeah, right. there's, I mean, there's a lot of good to that. There's a lot of bad. The good in PlayStation Now is you don't have to wait for, you know, a 50 gig Horizon Zero Dawn download to, to happen. You right. get to just jump right in. Whereas yes. on Microsoft's, you know, your internet could go out, theoretically, unless they kick you when your internet goes out, and you could still play this game. Right, my, so there's pros and cons to both. Because they let you download it, you get games like Horizon Zero Dawn versus getting games yeah. like Red Dead Redemption. That is Which, true. Well... Yeah. I like Red there Dead. There's some heavy games on there. I mean, there's like, there's good games on. The thing is, yeah. I feel like in well, the Red future, Dead is a heavy like, hitter. It's just old. Well, my point is, is not, like, they're not I, all old. I, that old anyway. They're really not. My point is, I think that the in the future you'll see this a lot. This will be a lot more common. The thing mm-hmm. is, is, there's not a lot of people out there that can play like, you know, on the latest gen console. But maybe there's people out there that can afford a seven ninety nine subscription. You know, um, it would be really interesting to see this sort of platform be more, you know, popular. You, you know what? You know what kills that though. Hmm. What kills that is ISP uh, data caps. So that's yeah. true. You know, yeah. Net- Netflix takes up you know a decent chunk of your bandwidth, but now now you're adding on you know all of your gaming in a streaming right. format, or or even even to a lesser extent, right? Depending on how long you play, you know, downloading fifty gig games every for every new thing that comes out. Um, yeah, kid, you know, we, I know we talked at length about net neutrality, but you know, that kind of cable company fuckery could seriously mess with this model, which bums mm-hmm. me out because I fucking love streaming my games. Yeah, yeah that would be know, really the cool. Biggest, the biggest obstacle though, that I think could be is just the input lag because there are certain games you just, you can't deal with that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't notice it when I played a lot of the games, partly because it's not none of the games I was playing were very competitive. There wasn't a huge input lag. It was all it was fine. Like everything was fine. So, I mean, so I played one game on it for about 20 or 30 minutes until dawn. Oh, nice. PS PS4 exclusive. Um, I really didn't like it at all. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't stop playing it because I had to. I stopped because I wasn't interested. Oh. But it's like um, it's like a serial killer movie, but you get mm-hmm. to play it out. And the whole point of the game is that you have to make decisions constantly. And those decisions right. directly affect who ends up living and dying and how the story goes. Right. So it played a lot to me, kind of like the Walking Dead series, the, tell- the Telltale Games mm-hmm. and uh, Heavy Rain. And I just hate that style of gameplay, so it just didn't oh, okay. it didn't grasp me at all. And I what, and I, what do you I'm not saying play? it's a bad game. It's just not for me. Yeah, the um they came out with that other the multiplayer version of Until. Well, basically based off of this Until Dawn, like they came up with another game that was called Hidden Agenda, and I think I talked about that pretty briefly. But mm-hmm. a lot of times people played Until Dawn multiplayer and not single player. And when I say multiplayer, okay. I don't mean actually with multiple people, but like with a whole bunch of people on a couch drinking, um, yelling at oh. the screen, which which yeah. choice to pick. <laughs> and that's how the majority of their biggest fan base was actually playing the game, okay. not solo. See, so, I could see that being fun. I could so, see that. Exactly. So that's why they came out with Hidden Agenda, because they wanted the multiplayer experience in a game like that. And I think Hidden Agenda, if given the time and the dedication, it's like an hour, hour and a half playthrough, um, mm-hmm. is really good. And I'd love to see an Until Dawn uh, replicate that same model. I mean, it's the same company, so it's not like they would be replicating something that's right. you know, someone else yeah. did. But I'd love, they're actually going to make a sequel to Until, Until Dawn. Um, I just hope that uh, I hope that when it does come out, it it follows the hidden agenda model instead of the uh, until dawn model. Right. That's so a should... that's a really good point. I didn't consider playing it that way with a bunch of people drinking on a couch, yelling at the TV with decisions. <laughs> that would actually be a lot of fun, and especially a game like this where it's a lot of the decisions directly affect which characters live and die. 
yeah it's hard you're... to make a game that you know sitting on a couch with your buddies drinking isn't fun to play that's <laughs> true <laughs> yeah that like, that's, that's a good Freddy's. argument <laughs> well yeah. i mean in this uh, in this situation like your friend could be super spiteful back like, fuck that guy kill that yeah. guy make yeah. him run away. <laughs> like, whatever he i don't like his face is there know? something yeah. wrong with that guy because i mean that's not yeah. like something yeah, i would play face. it's like fuck them kill him <laughs> yeah exactly and then like you then someone else would be like i like that guy and then you you know hilarity and Eric, Eric, we don't need to talk about your time with this war of mine anymore we've covered it at yeah. length <laughs> I'm just screwing people, man. People's awesome video games are overrated. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys just want to fly out here, I'll give it another shot, and we can all yeah, all right. uh, yeah I'll be there. Yeah. Give me until give me then. Uh, fuck yeah. that game. I didn't like it that much. So <laughs> uh, I played a little bit more of Soma. I didn't get that much further than the last time we spoke, but I played another hour or two. I think. Uh, it's really good, as always. I like how they're handling the enemies and playing in safe mode. So one of the enemies... It, some of them, like... Most of the ones you would have to stealth through, they basically... They will kind of look at you angrily and react, and you're, it'll do like the visual effects of like the glitching out and the, the creepy music and stuff. And then if you get too close, he'll like hit you and roar or something, and it like, you know pushes you back and it's mm -hmm. it's it's still really creepy and and it's pretty tense still just because of the atmosphere so it, i don't think it loses that much it loses some suspense some suspense and tension in the gameplay but it doesn't lose that much actual horror which is pretty cool that's huh. good i was worried yeah, about that yeah i mean I, I mean, I talked about this in the last podcast. I don't want to get into it too much, but there's multiple types of horror. There's uh, tension and suspense. There's atmosphere. And then like the existential uh, implications, you know, psychological horror, stuff like that. So that part is very much still a part of the game just because of how the story is and what it means. And you still got all of the atmosphere. None of the atmosphere is taken out because the enemies are still there and they still they still see you as a player. Mm -hmm. um, you just lose that uh, that oh shit what if it sees me kind of thing and you lose the uh, what if I die you know well yes and no so one of the things that I failed to bring up last time you were talking about Soma is um, there was this one enemy encounter in particular that started mm -hmm. off really scary and really terrifying and yeah. by the end of it I wasn't scared at all because it's in, when you're playing a horror game, if the same enemy kills you five or six times, yeah. the sixth yeah. time, you're just not afraid of him. You're just like, you're just tired fucking tired annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it lost all horror it, for me after that. that. Yeah, it definitely removes that because there's no fail state. Yeah. And then one of the enemies, um, like the key, the key gimmick of dealing with this enemy in the game is that you're not supposed to look at it. And if you look at it, it turns you to stone. You know, basically ends up killing you. No, it doesn't turn you to stone, but it's something like that. And and it's a cool idea for an enemy because, you know, the imagination is of, often worse than what you could actually see. And that was kind of the point of the am amnesia, is that you never really got a good look at those monsters because um, if you did, they were either A, killing you already, or B, your vision would distort and you need to run away. Um, so that was a kind of a cool enemy idea i thought and i was wondering how that w they would handle that in this game because they're uh at the risk of spoiling a little bit there's a chase scene with that person and I, that was especially something i wanted to see in safe mode how do they handle a chase scene mm -hmm. and the answer to that is well you still get chased but <laughs> if he gets too close to you he like teleports back like glitches out and teleports back a little further away and then continues to chase so it's hmm. still it, it worked they made it work really well that sounds like it sounds like a pretty big hurdle to go uh to expect like that horror to stay that 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 fear mm. to stay with mm -hmm. you but it sounds like they nailed it which is actually even more surprising than them even making the choice. Yeah. <laughs> is the original fair. is the original chase scene something that actually has a fail scenario? I bring that up yeah. because there's a lot of games that simulate a rush and make you think that there's a mm -hmm. time criteria or something. But you can play it's not it like out. Adventure. No, it's not like an no, adventure. No, nothing catches you in the original game. You die. 
Okay. And you have to start the chase scene over. Uh, my most recent was Gears of War 4. There was actually spots of that where they do a really good job to make you think you got to hurry. And I mm-hmm. intentionally just sat down the controller and just yeah. waited just to see, see, to what, see what happens. happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're you can't do that in a lot of horror games because a lot of it is the whole suspension of disbelief thing and if you start playing like an asshole then you lose the experience <laughs> but well i get what you're saying the way to <laughs> that's not weird. lose the experience is have them kill you yeah that's the weirdest thing though about horror games in general like especially like i'm i'm pretty bad with horror games but as soon as i die the fear of that whole area is over you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's I'm like the same way. you know, it's like oh, it's really scary. The the scariest games that I've played have been easy, where you're like mm-hmm. oh, where you're like fucking up trying to make it through, and you get hit, you're like oh my god, and you like, and then you finally make your way out of it. When really mm-hmm. like it wasn't that difficult to get out of to begin with. It wasn't a challenge per se, but it was just like mm-hmm. really stressful and scary. That's um, those are the scariest experiences. Like I played like Dead Space, and I've like you know, and there's there's times in that where you know, you're just going to get fucked up because it's hard, yeah. you know, but then you're just like, get frustrated and the fear goes away. So like taking the death mechanic out of a game is really interesting. Yeah, Cause a <laughs> lot of those horror games are based on jump scare, anxiety written based horror. So yeah. once you so know it's I've, there, it's nothing. I've got an idea. I, I I'm going to call this super mode for mm-hmm. Soma. I'm going to make a mod. Uh, anytime an enemy kills you, Soma shuts down and launches Super Ball. Holy <laughs> shit. You have to play one hour of it to be able to go relaunch Soma again. It keeps track of your Steam uh, So basically anybody that wants to play through Soma ends up dying and never playing it again. You mean yeah. in yeah. real life? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, and, they yeah what, if real life. what if the fail state was the game uninstalls? That's what you game, there, you there are actually games like that. Like, I like what games if there was a horror that game stuff. that was only permadeath? You had to start the whole game over. Did I ever tell you about the Conker's Bad Fur Day thing? What I don't know it? if I had. Uh, if you it sounds if, familiar, but I don't remember. If what you it is. if you hundred percent all of the save files in Conker's Bad Fur Day, it erases your game. No oh. shit. <laughs> That's what you get great. for playing so much of this. Go outside. Well, that game's an asshole. That game is our sense of humor <laughs> all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, so a lot, of, a lot of used game stores have, uh, you can, sometimes people will have, uh, you'll buy a cartridge and it'll have all of them 100% and like 199%. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so no, yeah. to rush in and do that and then like you lose everything, all the multiplayer content, everything's gone. God, like, I love like, that game. <laughs> that game was so fun. Their multiplayer modes, they had some really fun like storming the beach at Normandy kind of thing. Where you Wasn't had that a, the mm-hmm. sequel? No, that was in the original one. Multi- okay, cool. Because you had to put the expansion pack in to be able to go up to eight players. But you could, oh, right. half the team was in this base sniping and using a turret gun while the other half was ducking, dodging, getting to different vantage points to try to take them out. It was really fun. Yeah, I only played like the CTF mode um, that was in Conquer's Bad Fur Day and, uh, and just like the, the team deathmatch one. I never really played the mm-hmm. yeah. Storm the, of the Beach. The CTF was fun because of the Ninja Sword. You can cut yeah. people's heads off and deflect bullets. <laughs> Speaking of CTF, we have a winner, by the we way. We do. We have yeah. a winner for our 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 vote. Our, our postcast, postcast, game? postcast <laughs> community game poll. That one. Yes. It's big rigs. Big rigs CTF. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> big rigs capture the flag. <laughs> you get it. Everything you wanted. But no, um, oh Overwatch capture the flag tonight after yeah. the cast. That should be fun. Um, I'm yeah. disappointed that Dota 2 Turbo keeps losing. Yeah, that's I, I, couldn't, like, so I couldn't my, be more excited. My my pick, <laughs> my my pick for this week, where I threw it on the list, was Overwatch CTF, and then I voted for Dota 2, trying to uh, get these mind games going. You Except should have put a less really important. You know what, you guys? Yeah, I should have put you. Super Ball. You, guys, you know what you could do is get more people that are enthusiastic about Dota into the Discord, and then you would have we don't, Dota we don't need that game. level of negative toxicity um, in our Discord. Yeah, we we're trying to make this a nice troll. place. <laughs> <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> Can I guess Not we're never people. playing Dota ever? <laughs> Not all people that so play bad. Dota are assholes. Yes, they are. Who says someone who doesn't play Dota. I, I like that we're adopting this uh, close to the mic thing. I'm for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really just happy don't about talk that. Don't talk softer when you do it. 
because then it doesn't sound <laughs> weird. You talk like this. No, I'm what do you mean? I don't know. I kind of like it softer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, do you want to talk about video games? All right, yeah. Yeah, we, right. we went yeah. down. Uh, the last game I played last week was Viscera Cleanup Detail. It was the last uh, post-cats game. Viscera Cleanup Detail we've talked about before. It's just a stupid buggy janitor simulator. Yep. Space janitor simulator. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fun when you get a group of people in because you just dick around and do whatever you want. So me and Bivens were holding these protest signs and refusing to work until we had proper <laughs> work conditions and, uh, you know, uh, proper pay, benefits, working conditions, safety, et cetera. And then, of course, Dark Soul Invader and Bubbles' job was to uh, take our signs away and throw them into the incinerator. So we were effectively... <laughs> running around trying to collect as many signs as we could and keep them safe. And they were trying to, and it, it digressed and I did something I shouldn't have. And I started taking blood buckets and throwing them on the floors and ruining their cleaning. So, <laughs> you know, but it was fun. It was good. It, it was fun. I had a great time and it's, it's, it's a blast with everyone. What's actually really funny though, that took us that whole room, that whole level took us like four hours to clean, like the whole thing. Jesus. Right? Whitney did it by herself, by herself, the next day in less than an hour. God <laughs> damn. So you're saying that you guys are going to start doing uh, Vistra Cleanup Detail speed runs? Have you seen those? Those, thing? those yes. They are a thing. They need to be. Oh, I they need to see this. And they're dope. I need like, to see this. Because there's a bunch of different ways that you can go about it. Like there's certain mm -hmm. things you can do. So there's different kinds of speed runs for Viscera, but they're really cool. And some of these guys like, <laughs> mechanically are really fast it's really cool it's worth a watch i'm gonna yeah. buy that game i just am like it's i, I have it it's it's so stupid but it's, it seems really, really chill it is fun like that's that like it's i think cathartic's the word for it it's like you're just cathartic. going in yeah and you see everything and everything's messy and you just put on some you know lo-fi hip-hop and you're just kind of <laughs> going through and you're just like picking shit up the gloves maybe watching a show on netflix or whatever and you're just cleaning mm -hmm. That's all you're doing. You're just cleaning shit up. It's great. Speak, Josh, speaking did, of, was it you that linked me to that lo-fi hip-hop YouTube channel where he just I uploads did. a bunch of music from different people? Well, yeah. now he's got it set up to where he's got a live a link to a live stream where it just it's like lo-fi hip-hop radio. It's just always playing different stuff. Dude, it's did, so good. Did you see so that? Good. Did you see that the that Twitch has stuff like that now? No. Like, Do Twitch they? has. Yeah, Twitch has a music section that just plays hip hop. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. Or like, don't they like, have one for cooking shows too? Isn't there just a food channel? Well, what what's starting to be weird is like this Twitch is, uh, is becoming... stream safe music. It's specifically yeah. music that you can play on stream without copyright infringement. Oh, that's awesome. That's there's a, good, a bunch. Yeah. That's good. Of, there's a bunch of stuff that's really strange that Twitch is doing. You're starting to realize that it's just becoming TV. Yeah, <laughs> kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> hence, hence the URL Twitch TV. Well, they've had some shows. What are you trying to get a while, at? Like Attack and stuff like that, that have been actually pretty big shows that have been on Twitch for a while. I like this adaptation, though. Or adoption. I like this being more program based. Adap yeah. Adaptation, adoption, there. So, so speaking of just chill fucking games, I had I had kind of a busy week at work. It wasn't mm -hmm. bad. It was just intense. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I get on the bus in the morning and when I get on the bus at night to go home, I just I needed something to zone out to, to chill, put on my headphones, put on a podcast, something I didn't need the sound for. Dark Stardew Souls. fucking bad. Yes, Dark uh, Souls. <laughs> Dota right. 2. Just relaxed. Just people calling you all kinds of racial epithets and, and homophobic <laughs> words. People yelling at you the whole time. I just don't know who really does it for me. Uh, no, Stardew, Stardew fucking Valley. It's so chill. I put my headphones on. I turn on the Orange Lounge Radio video game podcast, which they're great. You should listen to them. Uh, they're way better than this show. Um, and, you can't um, say that. Can I? Are you sure? I think I just did. Damn. <laughs> um, but I would... You know, just sit near a lake and go fishing in Stardew and catch some shit. Go through and donate some shit to the museum, water my plants. It's just chill. It's a wholesome, chill game, and I'm loving Stardew Valley. Um, so, I have to ask about Stardew. Have you ever wondered, how in the fuck is there so many goddamn chests in that one itty-bitty pond? Like, right? someone <laughs> just keep dumping chests in this fucking pond, or what? 
<laughs> I mean, I've caught like a hundred chests out of this pond that can't be more than one acre. It's like they're lining the bottom of this damn pond with chests just for people to get <laughs> shit out of. Yeah. Um, it's it's good. I'm I'm loving Stardew. I love it on the Switch more and more because I can just turn it on, water some crops, you know, donate something to the museum, shut it off again. It's so easy to get back in and get back out. It's a perfect mobile game. Um, what isn't a perfect mobile game? It's a game that every time I say, oh, yeah, I've got like 10 minutes. I could play this game and it takes me three fucking hours is The Witcher 3, because I keep getting sucked into this story. Every time I'm just like, oh, it's a little thing. I'm just going to you know, solve this tiny mystery for this guy. And oh, no, it's this big thing that encompasses like two or three different factions and this multifaceted moral compass bullshit where I do something and then eight hours later, the game's like, well, you didn't make the right choice. You didn't make a wrong choice because morality is a spectrum and there's no such thing as right or wrong. But this is going to fuck your day. This is just going to fuck your day. <laughs> That's that's The Witcher 3, and the story is just getting better and better and better. I'm loving the RPG, uh, and more and more, I'm loving the controller controls on this game, because I can sit on the couch, I can sit near people, <laughs> and just play a game, and they get to watch a cool kind of story, and we don't have you know reruns of Archer going on while we're just dicking around on Reddit on our phones. It's Dark, a, Dark makes a, a good time. point. In, in The Witcher 3, you get to bang hot chicks. You do. So that is true. There's all, there's always point. that. So I tried, I tried, I went up, I went up to, to, uh, this person, I'm not going to spoil anything. And I was just like, Hey, let's bone. Except I didn't say that. I just, you know, walked up to them and pressed E. Uh, and they're like, Oh, Hey, um, there's this thing I'm worried about. It's a quest. Can you take care of this for me? We got to go to this place and do this thing. I'm like, no, I just want to bone you. Do I have to do a full quest line? And then like two hours later, I'm like, Holy fuck. Is the quest ending right now? I'm really involved in this. We can't stop to go bone. What's going to happen to this guy? There's, There's no time. Here. We have to rescue him. There's a secret dwarf in, in a weird mannequin thing. Like, what's going to happen? That's the primary yeah. focus of most of the games that me and my wife play together. Is she, she played through The Witcher, and she just the whole goal, she heard about the unicorn scene, and she's like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to play as hard as I can until I get to this unicorn scene. I need to see this. I need to see this happen. And so she played through Witcher. <laughs> And, so, and we did the same thing for Until Dawn. Uh, me and everybody on the couch were like, these two are probably going to bone. We need to do everything we can to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and there was a bunch of scenes where like, like oh, it's late. I'm like, you should stay over. Everyone's like, you should stay over. <laughs> Everyone gets the vote. So. Nice. It's fantastic. It's a good so way yeah, to play your games. Game there's a lot of boning in The Witcher. It. There's way more. If, if you're looking for a game with, with just boning and you're picking between The Witcher series and Mass Effect, The Witcher's got way more boning than Mass Effect does. They're that's both good. Good, good series. But uh, The Witcher's got way more if that's kind of your... Way your more intercourse. This is good. Yeah. Does it have yeah. God of War where you have quick time events? Or it does oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, oh yeah. my God. And then they give you experience okay. when you got done. Looking back on that series, <laughs> that was so fucking cringy. It is not even funny. Yeah. Just, well, the fact that they let you do it was pretty amazing. <laughs> the, the fact that San Andreas, you know, somebody hacked the game to basically make that a mode, got an adults only rating for it, and then got a war came out, and everyone's like, yeah, whatever, M rating. Like, that kind of pisses me <laughs> off. I'm not going to lie. It's fashionable to hate on GTA, so we will still yeah, do it to this day. True. Like, That's true. Not a whole lot of games let you hit hookers with baseball bats. So, only There's the always, best games do. I was gonna say only the good ones. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. It teaches kids think, from a young age what professions not to go into. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or if you're playing Saints Row, don't hit him with a bat. Hit him with a giant dildo, like a yes. yard long purple dildo, <laughs> while being uh, pulled by a gimp. Yeah, on a oh, rickshaw. Yeah. Oh my god, that part was so goddamn funny. The fact that that wasn't made up is <laughs> is exactly yeah. That's that's a part in the game. That's that's not something Josh just bullshitted right there. That's that's a mission. That's <laughs> But speaking of gimps and dildos in GTA, let's move on to something that is none of that. Um, Blizzard. Right. <laughs> nice segue. Blizzard sent song. out something really fucking cool. Um, they were kind of cryptic while not. They sent a tweet out of Diablo as a light switch being turned on and being turned off. Hmm. And that was it. And then everybody called him. I was like, oh, my God, Diablo threw in the switch. And then Blizzard replied, oh, no, we're not that clever. Here's the thing, though. They kind of are. 
what if they're, what they're if they're actually switch? what if they're just releasing that light like it's a night light so like if anyone hasn't seen it yet it's just like it's a sculpted <laughs> Like nightlight thing. What if they're just releasing like Diablo themed nightlights? <laughs> the like, next oh, thing they're going to do is sorry, everybody. <laughs> sorry to mislead you, but they're going uh, to announce that they're going to have a big release on April first, and then April first they'll have these plastered all over Amazon. As oh my god! Switches. <laughs> <laughs> but, I would but have actually it. in the box of the light switch is a download code that you plug into a my Nintendo account that gives you Diablo three on the switch. Like that has like a Mario really Kart cool. character. <laughs> oh god, yeah, that would it's the game disc that's driving the cart. <laughs> it would just <laughs> be, no, it would be really cool if it, was just, if it was just uh, if it was like the Diablo, like the main guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you just get him for Mario Kart, and that's the whole point. I would honestly yeah. rather have Diablo 4 than it for the Switch. I would, I would, was really hoping that's what that meant at first. And three, I'm like, oh, I don't think four. three's done. They're still pushing out content for three. I never got like huge into the Diablo games, especially with Torchlight kind of eating Diablo three's lunch uh, when it first came out. Um, well, but isn't it short though? Like it seems so short because like Shane played through, I mean, uh, you know, Shane played through the whole thing in like two days and that's including the DLC. They have an entire endless dungeon thing though. That's completely procedural. It's, it's all about the loot grind. It, yeah. I you might be able to so. complete, you, you can complete the main game, but well, that's what yeah, that it's all about, about the loot grind. Yeah. And that's also I mean, why I never really got into those games. Well, Diablo was really probably one of the first games to really drive home that loot grind concept back in Diablo. 1. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, Diablo one. I just went to the bottom and was like, "Yeah, yeah, I did it." There was like, no, I didn't, I didn't like play it anymore. <laughs> I just like, I was like, "Hey, yeah, uh, look at, I killed the guy." I All killed right, him. I see did. ya. <laughs> like, I don't got nothing. Bye, everybody. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll see if uh, if Blizzard actually puts us out on the Switch. I, I'm hoping they do. It would make a great mobile game, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, but it's it'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, Celeste devs release player movement code. I'm sorry, I don't know this fucking headline. It's really long. All right, I can, I can, yeah, I can you take got this. this. Yeah, the Celeste devs, uh, kind of one of the best indie platformers to come out uh, in a little bit. We're, we're getting showered with great platformers. Mario Odyssey, Hat in Time, Celeste, Super Meat Boy Forever is right around the corner. Like, I'm pumped, man. This is great. Um, but they just released their player movement code uh, for the platformer, which is really cool. They show here's how things work. Here's how the player interactions work with the various controls. Um, it's actually it's a really tough thing to get just right. And Celeste has got it in spades. So tough that's cool. as pi- tough as pittance. Is that the name of the platformer? I no no the the platformer is called Celeste. I don't know why that I don't know why Gama Sutra misspelled their headline, but I fixed it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was really yeah. confused there. Anyway, um, some other news. Ubisoft acquires Brawlhalla. Um, you might remember that name because we did that as a postcast about four months ago. Um, oh, it yeah. is a the platform brawler. Thing. Yes. Um, it was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, but Ubisoft snatching it up um, hmm. with their current business model, with what they've been doing with games, I can see some good stuff coming from this. They have been doing a lot of iterative builds and releases on top of games that I think would serve this really well. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. There's a lot to talk about on that. I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the biggest, that's, we'll that's, the, that's the biggest topic is There's I don't really care to much. About, but yeah. Yeah, let's not get into it. Yeah. This, this, will, this will be quick. Uh, so last week I told you about President Trump said he was going to meet with the president of video games. Um, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He didn't actually say the president of video games. That's what he meant, though. Um, <laughs> the, uh, Entertainment Software Association, the ESA, basically the giant trade group that uh, the vast majority of big game devs are a part of. So they're kind of like the industry leader. They, they speak on behalf of these big companies uh, mm-hmm. said, A, we have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Nobody has contacted us to talk to us about anything. Uh, and B, um, the video games are played worldwide, but the level of gun violence in the US is exponentially higher than the rest of the world where we sell these games. So uh you know science bro figure it out uh go fuck yourself um so yeah that's a bit up from that nice sounds right yeah sounds about right (laughs) 
Um, on lighter stuff, uh, PlayStation is dropping PS3 and Vita games in 2019. The PlayStation Plus is dropping that. What, what do you mean dropping them, getting rid of them? Sony will no longer include PS3 or Vita games in the lineup starting March 2019. I guess that's just pretty straightforward, huh? That's really yeah. weird. Why? Yep. Uh, Support. We talked about this before. I know the answer. You know the expensive. answer. Yeah. It's just yeah. really frustrating. I just would really like them to just really skate for <laughs> anyway, um, Tom, your game release is, is releasing or released a new hero. Indeed, my game, the one that I made, the, the one, one that I'm made. very famous for. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, Overwatch is releasing a new character, uh, Torbjorn's daughter, uh, Brigitte. Not Bridget, Brigitte. Brigitte. Um, yes. Uh, she's kind of a melee support character. She's got a personal shield. She's got like a big, uh, wacky hammer thing that extends. Uh, looks kind of cool. Um, like baby Reinhardt. Yeah. Kind of like baby Reinhardt, except in a support model. When she whacks people with her hammer, the people around her get healed. So it seems kind of cool. I'm, Wait, I'm are you sure it's not Reinhardt's daughter? Yes, I am completely sure. It was Torbjorn's daughter. Uh, they, like they've got an entire fucking backstory for this character already. Uh, Torbjorn's <laughs> daughter, but trained under Reinhardt because uh, she liked the path that they were going down or something. Huh. And she didn't want to make weapons like Torbjorn because that's what he was famous for. She wanted to make armor. Uh, and the place where they were really interested in like protecting people and armoring people was Reinhardt. So she trained under that battalion, and she was actually seen in one of the uh, in Reinhardt's story clip. Uh, if you oh, watch cool. any of the Overwatch animated shorts, she's actually in that. So, you know, it's Overwatch. It's a big, giant, incestuous ball of backstory. I really hope that they <laughs> release, like, a final movie of the whole thing. I think yeah. that would be sweet. Well, you can go on YouTube and pull up all of the animated shorts. Uh, it's no, like, no, I know that. It's like yeah. a fucking hour and a half long. Yeah, there's a lot of them, and they're really good. It used to be really cool if they just put them all together, because it's all... They all, like work really well anyway but yeah, yeah um, so, so new character cool. um overwatch as always updating their shit uh metal gear survive the uh new and probably last kojima triple a game um yeah is charging ten dollars for any additional slots for character saves that yeah, it's so stupid. So, it's uh, just, and, <laughs> and I've heard that game is absolute dog shit anyway. Oh, it has gotten it banned. looked horrible. It didn't even look it's fun gotten very at all. banned. I've heard that it's nothing more than just taking assets and throwing them together for it. Yep. They, though so, I did hear there was some really cool stuff the developers did by nodding the caps. Like if you take all the uh, different heroes and you spell it out, it says uh, Kojima Games Forever. And like no, again, right, yeah. they do a nod to all um, Metal Gear Solid Five de- or team. Yeah, uh, so cool. Dark Soul, okay. Dark Soul Invader uh, comes through with a really, uh, really middle of the road comment here uh, that strikes a balance between what Konami's trying to do and what gamers really want. Uh, he says, "In other news, fuck Konami." Um, and then, yeah, I say yes, fuck Konami. So <laughs> fuck you, Konami. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> pretty much. Um. Yep. And Kazuya or Yakuza, not Kazuya. That was close Yaku- enough. I suppose. Kazuya. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's so it's, 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 it's a Tekken. It's a Tekken thing. Uh, but what? What? Uh, what? Kazuya. I, I'm Tekken getting more thing. lost. The more that, it's a fight. Yakuza Tekken. 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 They had their demo Whoops. as the full game with gates. That's wow. fucking nuts. <laughs> I'm sure it's actually more common than I think, but that seems risky. It's, it's actually kind of common. <laughs> That's believe it or not. Okay. Super risky. But anyway, they had to pull it because people have found out how to access the entire game. Um, they were <laughs> trying to get it back out there. I do not have updated news as to whether or not it is hit back out, but they're trying to get it back up. Uh, Chrono Trigger. They Yay. are now on Steam. A new release. Don't buy it. Don't, 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 don't. buy it. I won't buy it, but I think it's cool for anyone that didn't experience it to jump no, in. No, it. it's, it's not. I didn't experience it. Really? It's not, actually. Yeah. So Chrono Trigger, Trigger is, is one of the best 
uh, RPGs from the 16-bit era. It is fantastic. The story is great. The characters are memorable. The combat isn't a slog like most random RPGs. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it just the, the music is fucking outstanding. The artwork is super crisp and detailed and pixely. It's amazing. The issue with this port is if you look at these screenshots, it's actually a port of the mobile game. So they've got this beautiful 16-bit artwork. Um, and for all the text, it's just rendered in like default Arial from your computer because it's the mobile port. So you've got like this, this beautiful backgrounds and then this like glaring, just white blocked Arial text for the Chrono Trigger. Uh, yeah, for okay. everything. Uh, so that's so sucks, if you don't care but, about the way the text looks, but yeah, that's, that's the whole fine. game, right? It's it's a 16 bit RPG, right? You're the vast majority of your time is spent reading text about stories and going through menus, and the whole thing looks like dog shit. For the record, no I would rather play the game with bad text than not, because I've played games with Japanese fucking text because the game's fun to play. I I would recommend like yeah. you know either either pulling the ROM or or even. Yeah, I did just recommend pulling the ROM or on the PlayStation if you want to buy a physical disc. They've actually got a re-release on the PSX. Yeah, that uh, one's with, actually with amazing. FMVs. Yeah, it's a yeah. fantastic port. Um, and it's it's a fucking PlayStation game, so you could probably find it on the cheap. Uh, you know, grab that. You know what's really interesting is if you actually look at the reviews on uh on Steam, it's mostly negative, and it's oh, and it's really? and it's probably because of the fact that it's a uh, it's a rough port. I, I think I said this last week. Why the fuck are these companies concentrating on, you know, putting out these big ass remasters when they could just fucking brand a Super NES emulator, throw the ROM in there and sell the whole package and it would be the best port of Chrono Trigger anyone has ever seen. Why go through all the effort to fuck this up? There would probably be some legality issues with um, there's, there's emulating. Not. Yeah. Wow, it does no, look really there's bad. There's not at all. It just it doesn't look bad. Like I'm, I'm I'm reviewing it now and looking at it right now, and it doesn't look terrible. It just looks super out of place. It kind of ruins the overall feel because it's like the text the text itself is super crisp and everything around it is you know, eight bit. <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, so I, I would recommend it. You could buy if you buy the game legitimately. You could you could pull the ROM as no, you can't. Can't you pull it legally? No, After, no. Really? why? No, it's I thought it's I thought that's how, how it works. works. I I would I would explain it to you on the show, but it's a very big and detailed copyright law and DMCA explanation. But okay, you cannot so pull it. That. Yeah, not legally anyway. You can't do it legally anyway. If you don't care about the law, so you have to own the original disc. <coughs> yeah. So either either go grab this on the Super Nintendo, which will be a sixty dollar purchase because that came as still pretty expensive on the Super Nintendo, uh, or grab the remaster on the PSX. It's great. It's got the FMV cutscenes. Um, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, and then one last little thing for you. Um, we've harped about loot boxes. We've said a lot about it. We know it's been in the news a lot. Well, the ESRB is doing something about it. Kind of? Not really? Eh? Yeah. Kinda. No. So um, they are now adding a label. This is not part of the ESRB uh, sticker you're used to. It's actually going to be an additional part, um, mm-hmm. kind of like the online interactions bullshit. But mm-hmm. you're labeling a game as in-game purchases if there is any monetary transaction on the game with real currency. Any. Okay. That includes DLCs, map packs, microtransaction transactions, transactions. Transactions. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, loot boxes if you have to buy keys and stuff. So it is everything. Okay. So a game like so Horizon a, Zero Dawn. an extra Dawn, sticker on the box. Yeah. Like That's Horizon fine. Zero Dawn gets this. As well as a game like um, Rocket League, who has the loot box kind of thing. There mm, is no fine. differentiation. It is all just a big old bam sticker. That's, yeah, yeah, so I, the, I don't the know how they're doing this. Be, but that's fine. Probably, it's not like it's intrusive. Yes. Parents don't fucking read the ESRB stuff anyway. The amount of yeah. five-year-olds with GTA is way too fucking high uh, yeah. and really common. Um, but they, the ESRB did a study, and they tried to see if parents would understand the difference between loot boxes, in-game purchases, DLC, cosmetic-only skins, game uh, like multiplayer skill-altering items, um, 
uh, and expansion packs, stuff like that. And they said, parents don't know what any of this shit means. The only thing they understand is, can my kid cost me money by doing something in a video game? Uh, yeah. And that's the only thing they cared about. So that's kind of what made them do this all in one thing. I, I get it. I don't necessarily fully agree with it, but at least we have something, right? I disagree. It's like calling drugs Tylenol, morphine, codeine, pot, heroin. <laughs> They're all yeah. drugs, so let's label them all drugs. I mean, if you're too uh, broad, it's worthless. And this is worthless. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. I had to get my Tylenol on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just think that um, if you're going to do something, make it worth a damn. Not just doing it to try to keep the government off your tail because this isn't going to help uh yeah it's not going to help but i mean what what else could they do exactly they could label it out i the generation yeah, I of parents that don't understand it is dying or oh, getting older and not being parents that need to worry about it anymore we are entering <laughs> the age of being the parents that need to worry about this stuff now yes i think yeah. some people in our generation don't know what it is a lot of our generation does Right. Well, it's it's not like this is the one and done. Hey, we're going to put in-game purchases, and that's the only thing we are ever going to put uh, right. you know, as part of the ESRB. Because E plus 10 became a thing well after the ESRB was uh, instantiated, right? Because you have the everyone games, and you have, yeah, well, Mario can punch people, which is kind of violent, but not violent enough for a teen rating. So we're going to give it an E plus 10 just to let you know that, hey, maybe don't show your toddlers punching people unless they want them punching their siblings. Mm -hmm. um, right. And, and I'm sure the ESRB in the future will say, you know, cosmetic only loot or cosmetic only loot boxes or in-game currency or, uh, you know, game affecting loot boxes, stuff like that. And Proto right. Tricks just said in chat a beautiful thing that discredits them just as much as they need to be. The ESRB is stating that 70 percent of parents follow and read the ESRB recommendations. That is not what the ESRB said. <laughs> Prototrix's quote was, read an article on this and somebody did a study that said upwards of 70% oh, of parents sorry, read, it wrong. read and follow the ESRB. Yeah, so I, I would argue against that, but I don't have any recent data to back that up. Uh, I just know that, you know... 70% lots, of parents is a lot of, lot of parents. Yeah. yeah. None of my friends' parents gave a shit. Mine did. When I brought home Perfect Dark, uh, they they looked on. Well, I didn't bring it home. I picked up Perfect Dark at you know Toys R Us or Best Buy or wherever I was, and I said, "Hey, can I get this game?" They said, "Ah, M rating, and you're like 14. What's in this?" And so they flipped over the back of the box and said, "Oh, Blood and Gore." And for the first few hours of the game, they actually made me hook up my N64 in the living room, and I got to play Perfect Dark on the big TV to show them why the game had an M rating. And Dad was like, oh, <laughs> you shoot them and their brains splatter against the wall? That's fine. But God forbid a fucking nipple shows up because that game is out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. My that's, parents bought me Ultimate MK3 for the Genesis. My mom freaked out about Mortal Kombat, but, you know, other games were totally fine that were even worse. Like Grand Theft Auto? Totally fucking fine. Mortal Kombat? <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my parents were more um about vulgarity and music than um video game violence i mean god yeah. forbid you you forget about dre i get it i get it yeah. you can't can't do that no, no one yeah. no one can forget about dre mm -mm. well anyway i think that's about it um <laughs> any of you guys got anything you want to add no nah, i think i'm good <laughs> okay with that yeah. well, um, i've got everything everyone on twitch <laughs> Go to our YouTube. Check it out. 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. All our shit's there if you missed something. Um, you got some content you'd like us to talk about, not talk about. Hate the Dark Souls talk. You should let us know. So it's not just me being vocal. You should tweet at us at 72 PC Podcast. Um, if you're over on our like it. Oh God. Anyway, um, <laughs> if you're on our YouTube um, live Saturday night, 6 p.m. Eastern St Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Come watch us on our Twitch at .tv slash 72 pin connector. Be part of the chat. Interact with us. Join the community. Speaking of community, you should join our Discord. Um, links below on our Twitch or all our links found on our website at 72pinconnector.com. There you can also get RSS feeds for the podcast or on Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes, wherever the fuck you want to get us. <laughs> and finally, before we get out of here, let's do one more special thanks for our guest for the night our soul for the night 
Dark Soul Invader. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was real yeah, romantic. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Dark Soul, for coming out. Our soul, our, 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 our heart and soul. <laughs> we um, love you, Dark Soul Invader. <laughs> if you haven't before, everyone should go check out his Twitch. It's it's pretty solid. He uh, plays a lot of different shit. Uh, the dude's good. The dude is really good at games. So go check him out. <laughs> support him. He supports us. We need to, We want you to support him. And Twitch yeah. TV slash Dark Soul Invader. Go do it. So, with also that, thanks to Samurai Samurai Link Three for subscribing. Whoever that is, yeah, we really Some appreciate you. Bag. I thought we tried to get rid of him. <laughs> Why the fuck is he you, still around? You banned it. You, you banned him. It, it expired. God damn it! We got to re up that. Anyway, <laughs> yep. with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for a cast this week. So, until yes. next week, game on. Overwatch capture the flag. Join us. Yeah, let's do it. Woo. See you, bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye. yeah. yeah.